Welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. Today's show we will address deep wounds that our country and our globe are currently struggling with. Islamophobia, which is rooted on hate and fear. Well-known public figures and social media all over the world that are exploiting the public's genuine need for security in ways that have disastrous consequences for human rights. As a result, a wave of anti-refugee legislation, harassment of Muslims, and a call to respond to terrorism by committing torture and war crimes are plaguing our world and our hearts. We cannot talk about Islamophobia without talking briefly about bigotry. Bigotry comes from the French word bigoterie. It sounds too sophisticated and beautiful, doesn't it? Bigoterie, oh, but don't be fooled because the meaning of bigotry is far from being beautiful or sophisticated. A bigot is intolerant and unwilling to recognize and respect differences in the opinions and the beliefs of others. And it is this intolerance that sustains prejudice and discrimination against people based on their gender, values, social, age, disability, religion, sexuality, race and ethnicity, language, nationality, beauty, occupation and education. And that happens in our state, our country and around the globe. If men created borders and divisions, art work works as bridging agents to help us learn and in some cases unlearn, reflect, heal and feel connected with each other. Today we have a special guest with us, Taylor Chang, director of Doris, Doris Du Theatre Honolulu Museum of Arts. Taylor will be talking about the Seventh Art Stand, which is a nationwide act of cinematic solidarity against Islamophobia. Well, welcome to our show, Taylor. Thank you for having me. Yes, so, uh, so uh, before we jump in and talk about uh, this amazing opportunity that uh, the state of Hawaii and Honolulu will be gifted with, mm. I always like to uh, take a little time to talk about uh, our guest. And so, where yeah. are you from? Uh, um, uh, so. Um, Taylor Chang was my name, and I was uh, born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii, uh, in Kaimuki. And um, I'm just really glad to be, you know, working at home and uh, being able to work in the arts and exhibit films and music that has a message and can be a platform for conversation. Yeah, well, what an <laughs> yeah. honor, you know, to have not only you uh, directing, you know, such a beautiful space and doing such important, meaningful work for our community, uh, but also even more meaningful that you are from here and you chose to continue to be here. Uh, so, um, we're going into our uh, program mm. and uh, uh, let us uh, know a little bit about uh, uh, what prompted a nationwide movement to create Seventh Art Stand. Yeah, um, so uh, the Seventh Art Stand is a nationwide series that um, venues from across the United States are jumping board or are participating in. And so far, I believe there's over 20 uh, organizations um, who are participating in the Seventh Art Stand in the month of May. We uh, jumped on board really early on, and we committed to screening films representing the seven countries affected by the travel ban. Um, you know, from the beginning, from the from the first travel ban, and uh, with that, we selected a series of films uh, from the different countries or depicting uh, the d issues in the different countries. And we also decided to expand upon that and uh, have music and concerts and to tie the film exhibition to the visual exhibitions that take place at the museum. So uh, our program locally is very specific uh, to our community and every single organization uh, is you know, independently putting together their own programs. And uh, we're really excited about the program that we put together, and we look forward to basically working with the community uh, to engage people, to elevate the conversation, and um, to inspire people not only to you know feel empathy for you know the issues and that are at play, but also to get our audiences to act outside of the space. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I hear that the starting date is May 27th. Yes. And yeah. we have a very special guest to open. Art is amazing. 
uh, you know, event, which is our Attorney General. Mm. Uh, so uh, tell us uh, why um, uh, you picked uh, uh, Attorney General uh, as you know, our main speaker to open uh, this, this event. Well, um, so our media sponsor is Honolulu Civil Beat. And we're really fortunate to be able to work with them. And in collaboration with them, we are presenting the opening talk uh, featuring Attorney, Nige Attorney General Doug Chen. Um, and of course, that was we did that just based off of Hawaii's current role in um, legislation and, and in, in freezing the Muslim ban for the time being, hopefully. Um, and it's a very timely subject matter. Um, and the fact that uh, the program is taking place at the end of May. Um, it will give us a lot of a, a lot is going to happen between now and then, and so to be able to have him frame the conversation for mm -hmm. the program before the, the you know the films and and the concerts kick off um, is kind of the perfect way to set the stage for our audience to engage and to sort of be um, thinking about these films and the messages that they have. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, absolutely. And uh, um, yeah, I think for most people who have never had a chance mm -hmm. to uh, go to the Middle East uh, yeah. countries in Africa, which, you know, uh, Somalia, um, it was based in Africa, Egypt, right. uh, uh, you know, those are countries, one of the countries, a couple of the countries that were banned, you know, with the uh, new executive order uh -huh. uh, proposal. Uh, I think arts is such a nice way to show uh, the richness, you know, of, of um, you know, a, a person's language and mm -hmm. their cultural uh, values and history. Right. Uh, that's how I traveled around the world and gained uh, appreciation and mm. respect, uh, not only for differences, uh, but also a uh, keen curiosity uh, for the unknown. Right. Uh, I think that there's a lot of fear uh, and a lot of uh, hatred uh, instilled in people's minds mm -hmm. and hearts. But if we, you know, uh, Share those layers and learn, or unlearn, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and look at look at situations and, and cultures and places from a place of curiosity and openness. Right. Uh, perhaps part of uh, this dialogue will shift uh, in, in, in big ways. Right, and and that's really mm -hmm. sort of you know the purpose of cinema really is to move mm -hmm. people through um, the moving image and to inspire wonder, as you said mm -hmm. about. Uh, other places and people, and yeah, I think it's it's a testament to kind of the power of art to be able to bring people together and to have and to make um, issues personal um, and to inspire empathy and mm -hmm. to get the general public um, emotionally invested in what's happening outside of our communities mm -hmm. um, and uh, film uh, music. Um, tend to be seen as, you know, one of the more assess most accessible forms of art. Um, but all art forms essentially function mm -hmm. in that way. So, um, you know, it's, it's inspiring to see art organizations come together and to, you know, get involved um, mm -hmm. and to not be afraid to take a stand. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, yeah. And I think <laughs> that the, the, the collective effort uh, and uh, having the museum mm -hmm. framing that in a safe platform uh, yeah. and uh, having uh, artists from around the globe uh, yeah. uh, not only to show that beauty in their, through their art, uh -huh. but also the uh, ability now with technology to be able yeah. to have Skype conferences right. with the filmmakers. Right, uh, which is what we're hoping to do. We're hoping to uh, frame each film with some form of dialogue, um, and definitely trying to engage the filmmakers as much mm -hmm. as as much yeah. as we can. Um, and yeah, the technology is allowing us to be able to connect with uh, filmmakers from around the world, mm -hmm. and uh, it it definitely elevates the conversation. Um, so what are the hopes that you have uh, um, as you know, someone who really has put so much thought uh, into this beautiful program? 
um, as you think about the audience's response mm. and you talk about engaging people in dialogue yeah. and changing the narratives yeah. that we currently carry, mm -hmm. uh, what are the topics that you hope will uh, suffer from some of these movies and uh, the exhibit? Right. And, uh, and, and, and about moving forward too, because uh, right. unfortunately, uh, Seventh Art Standard will have an end date and right. then will <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of things there. Yes. Um, in terms of you know conceptualizing how to how to um, create space for dialogue, that's definitely um, something that's on my mind every single day, and it, it part of part of the work that goes into addressing that is to uh, strategically and effectively work with the community mm -hmm. uh, to get people in the door first off, so that people can physically be in the same mm -hmm. space to have that conversation, and now. You know, we did our best to select films that would provide platforms for mm -hmm. different conversations. Um, and each film is very different from each other, and it's portraying very different narratives and very different stories. Mm -hmm. So every single event will have a different dialogue. And it's, it's, it's not necessarily our place as an organization to, to editorialize that dialogue, but it is our role to create a safe space so that for that dialogue can happen. Mm -hmm. And the people who come and the people who we ask to perhaps either introduce the film or do a post-screening Q&A, whether it's a filmmaker or a community leader or, a, or an academic or someone, mm -hmm. um, uh, it, the the people who are in the space are the ones who are going to be creating that dialogue when it happens. And, and you know, we try our best to be able to facilitate that. And, you know, we can anticipate things, um, but at the end of the day, when the event happens, whatever dialogue happens, is that's going to be it. And mm -hmm. it tends to be, um, you know, we have a lot of Q&As in our space for so many different films and so many different topics. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's, you can never anticipate what's going to happen. Um, you just have to select the right people to collaborate with to kind of mm -hmm. set the stage for it. Um, some, of the, some of the things that I think would be great to kind of arise to the surface in these conversations mm -hmm. is to talk good. about, um, you know, um, what does Islamophobia look like here locally? How do we make, um, how do we make this sort of national conversation feel uh, like a personal one, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, and uh, having the Muslim Association of Hawaii uh, involved in that conversation is incredibly important um, to kind of raise awareness that we do have a Muslim community here. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, to kind of um, also, you know, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Keep going. Oh, well, also, <laughs> also, I mean, there's there's a lot of um, I think. Even for myself, there's a lot of misconceptions around what's happening politically. Mm -hmm. Everything's happening happening so fast, and um, it doesn't necessarily, you know, affect us on a day to day basis. We just know that, um, you know, we just know that things are happening across the group. So, you know, how do we make things personal? How do we make people inspire people to act? and to make changes in their lives to combat this kind of, you know, yeah. uh, I can keep going. So I, I, I think, you know, you're yeah. right. Uh, you know, exposure <laughs> through awareness and education and the yeah. dialogue are the first steps. Uh, and uh, so we will be taking a, a quick break uh, okay. very shortly. <laughs> and I uh, will continue with our second part of the okay. show. And uh, delve in a little bit deeper yeah. into the program. I'm so excited to talk about Me it. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Aloha and haoli makahiki ho, which is Happy New Year, and I hope it's a happy and prosperous new year for you. I'm Kili'i Akina with the Grassroot Institute. Every week we partner with Think Tech Hawaii and produce a program called Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We bring together movers and shakers who are making a difference here in Hawaii, making a better Hawaii for everyone. If you're interested in improving the economy, the government, and society, join us every week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m., for Ehana Kako on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Until you see me then, aloha. Aloha Kako. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey with us. We are here every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. and we really want you to be with us where we look at the options and choices of end-of-life care. Aloha. 
Welcome back to Global um, Justice uh, Perspectives on Global Justice uh, with uh, Taylor Chang. <laughs> we were just laughing up on the break here, oh, for good reasons, of course. Uh, um, so uh, here we are talking about a lovely uh, opportunity that the state of Hawaii has uh, to invite our community to talk about Islamophobia and also to bridge our preconception notions on the topic and hopefully heal and engage in much needed dialogue uh, um, over the subject uh, uh, through a nationwide uh, um, initiative uh, 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 through uh, Seventh Art Stand. Mm. So as we were... <laughs> <laughs> There's too much to talk about. There too much to talk about it. <laughs> so, okay, so we know that the opening day, May 27th, yeah. we're going to have our Tony General opening and blessing this beautiful, uh, you know, opportunity and event uh, and uh, reframing the dialogue which is you know so so amazing yeah that you know the state of Hawaii actually was the state that stopped the executive orders from being in effect right. uh, and uh, then we have uh, uh, I hear a music performance yeah in the evening you want to talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that sure. and who is our, our guest so um, so uh, we are opening the program uh, with a, not only a talk, but also with a live performance featuring a Syrian artist. His name is Kevor Murad. Um, he's a New York-based artist, originally from Syria, um, but he paints live to musical accompaniment. So we're pairing him with Ig 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 Iggy Yang, who is the concert master of Hawaii Symphony Orchestra and one of the premier vi violinists locally. And so uh, they are collaborating, and they're collaborating now. They're in the process of um, crafting what they're going to perform. Um, but um, it's 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 going to be a, a a concert, but also a live painting experience. Uh, and and Kevork, um, his art uh, really does comment on conflict and and trauma and reconciliation. Um, and it, it should be really beautiful. And it's it's going to be highly improvised as well. So. Um, and it's kind of, to be honest, it's quite early on to really know for sure what exactly they're going to be doing. But it's going to be an hour uh, long, basically live painted painting. It's going to be projected onto our screen in accompaniment with um, uh, a viol violin. Uh, and it should be really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I should say that the program, it includes um, nine films total. And it's uh, book ended by two live performances. So the first one being featuring uh, Kevar Murad. And then the closing concert features um, a Syrian violinist from Aleppo. Her name is Mariella Shaker. And she um, came, through a U came to the US through a grant. And, and since then, she's been traveling around the world um, playing the violin and sharing her personal story and to elevate the conversation around mm -hmm. the crisis happening in Aleppo, Syria, which is incredibly timely now. Um, given re recent news, um, and so we are we're bookending the the film series with live performer live performance featuring Syrian artists. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So that before we talk about uh, uh, the film screenings, mm. I wanted uh, to see if you could uh, share a little bit yeah. of the information on the new exhibit that the museum carries on Islam uh, yeah. culture. Uh, yeah, so there are uh, two uh, galleries on view right now. Uh, one is, uh, we, we call it uh, the Islamic Gallery, which is newly mm -hmm. renovated, and it features um, artifacts from our um, Islamic art collect connect collection. And where, um, where does it come from? Like, where does the collection come from? It, it uh, comes from all over um, the different countries within the, within the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I, 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 I believe we have artifacts from every single, almost every single country. Um, and I don't think they're all on view, mm -hmm. um, but it's also the artifacts that we have is also, uh, uh, we have them because of our partnership with the Doris Duke Foundation Shangri-La mm -hmm. organization. Um, and the museum and Shangri-La have a, have a long-standing partnership. And so um, uh, many of the artifacts comes from the Shangri-La and the Doris Duke Foundation's mm -hmm. collection, which mm -hmm. we exhibit at the museum. Yeah, we're so lucky yeah. to have them both. Yeah. yeah. And how long did it take for the new galleries to be built? You uh, know, uh, that information is actually beyond my <laughs> current knowledge. Um, but it's, it's you know, it, it was um, reopened this past year, within the last year. Mm -hmm. And I believe it, it took 
them about a year to re-renovate it and sort of rearrange how the objects were displayed. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, it was it was the artifacts were the art objects were re were repositioned within the gallery to elevate the conversation mm -hmm. and to you know kind of. Yeah. yeah, and I'm really excited uh, to see, you know, I haven't been to the new galleries yet yeah. and I can't wait in that. For me as a child, uh, growing up in Brazil, uh -huh. what was really nice, uh, you know, through the eyes of, of a young soul, you know, and heart and, and that openness, uh, being able to see through the museums and uh, through yeah. arts. Uh, the beauty of, of Islamic culture, mm -hmm. and so the tile book, and the Quran, and the food, and the, right. the poetry. Right. I fell in love with Rumi when I was right. six years old, and uh, I did not know he was from Persia. You know, like his words mm. spoke to my heart mm. uh, because were words you know, of love. Mm -hmm. uh, he talked about community faith and that uh, helps and, and, and pain sometimes mm -hmm. and uh, uh, reconciliation mm -hmm. and these are all common themes that unites all cultures regardless of where you come right. from regardless of what you believe in mm -hmm. and uh, if I as a child had that chance you know I mean I really hope that the galleries you know get to be really visited by many children many adults and that people can look you know, into different parts of cultures and, and ask more questions and reflect yeah. more right? yeah. and change those uh, uh, preconceptions and also the narratives that we have about um, you know, the, the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. So, so you're going to have the exhibit in conjunction with the films. Yeah. And, uh, so um, how would you like to cover the films? Because we have several are, and from different um, countries. We have the films from Iran. Yeah. Um, um, so. Um, should we go through the entire yeah. list? You think? Okay. So, or I can try to. to you. Um, so we have two films from Iran: um, mm -hmm. The Salesman, which recently won the Oscar for Best Foreign Film, um, and um, quite. Um, so it's a thriller, yeah. right? Um, it's 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 a it's psychological. A drama, yeah, it's a psychological. I guess you could say thriller um, or drama. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know he, uh, the the director Asghar Farhadi, um, famously did not attend the Oscars in um, protest of the travel ban. Mm -hmm. And um, we we actually premiered the film here a while like for a few screenings, and it and um, it really re resonated with people. And so it was a perfect way to kind of bring the film back and and kind of put it contextualize it within this series. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The second film we're screening is Under the Shadow. Mm -hmm. And it, that one, that one is a is a horror film, um, and it's a it came out a year ago, and it it it, it it's a, it's it's kind of rare to see a, a horror film um, um, set in in Iraq and mm -hmm. or sorry Iran, Iran. Um, and it it premiered at Sundance Film Festival and it left a, a huge impact. I remember being there at the festival at that time and um, just hearing everybody talk about this film, um, and so so we're screening Under the Shadow. Um, then for Yemen, we have the old day on old Sana'a. Mm -hmm. it, it's the it's the only feature narrative to um, come out of Yemen thus far, and uh, we we felt it was important to, to screen that film. Mm -hmm. um, and why is that? Uh, well, um, it's it's it, it's been it's uh, being you know the only film uh, narrative drama that has um, come out of Yemen um, mm -hmm. in the past ten years, mm -hmm. and you know hopefully there will be more. But mm -hmm. in a way, it kind of most first of all, no, most people don't even know of the film, and then second, um, it's it's. We, you know, we wanted to screen it so that one we can educate people about that, that this film exists and that two um, uh, we can sort of make the film relevant again you know mm -hmm. and then hopefully mm -hmm. that will um, sort of set the stage for us to kind of continue to support mm -hmm. you know filmmakers from Absolutely. Yemen and, and, and it's so yeah. hard I think to do independent uh, film you know, in countries uh, any country in the world that does not have a large budget but right. imagine places that Really does not have a, a very well developed, you know, in the sense of the uh, training and uh, the facilities, uh, the censorship that may be involved oh, with safety. Totally. Right. Uh, it adds extra layers. Yeah. So I look at these uh, films as really exquisite piece of art, but such yeah. 
An amazing which pull. Is, which is really important to be able to conceptualize the film appropriately and to mm -hmm. get people to introduce the films, whether it's, not, whether it's a filmmaker or a scholar, to really kind of help the audience sort of digest and understand mm -hmm. what they're seeing. Because it's true, the aesthetics are completely different and the sensibilities are completely different and mm -hmm. the codes are completely different. Um, and so you mentioned censorship. And, mm -hmm. you know, you really need to be, at, you know, even myself, and I'm still in the process of educating myself on how to kind of spot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the kind of inversions of, of aesthetics and coding. And I'm like at, I'm not like, I'm still at 101, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so yes, we, we need people to um, help us contextualize these films and to appreciate them. Otherwise, they, they, they're, we don't know how to, how to... Um, how to bring meaning to, yeah. what, you know, the, the narrative that we're going to be really creating right. in these in their exposures, right. the dialogues that right. need to come out of it, too. Right. Um, yeah. And same thing with, like, you know, um, a, a visual art or a fine arts exhibition, mm -hmm. like the Islamic mm -hmm. Gallery or the, par or the Shazia Sekanda Parallax exhibition. Um, um, it's the reason why there is text on the wall uh, mm -hmm. to help the viewer contextualize what they're seeing and to appreciate mm -hmm. it. It's why there are um, gallery tours and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, think I can keep going in terms yeah, of, you know, there's, good, there's... Good so we got Somalia, uh, yeah, Fishing Without fishing Nets. Fishing Without Nets. Yeah. Um, and that is, it's, it's a drama, it's a narrative drama. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to have the filmmaker, the director, who's going to fly out, and he's going to be with us um, to mm -hmm. do a, a introduction and a post-screening ah. Q&A. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, and then from Iraq. Iraq, we have two films that actually both focus um, more specifically on, on the Yazidi um, people. And, 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 and Kurdish culture. And sort of, you know, we made the decision to uh, screen film, two films from Iraq that, that focused on that issue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because it, it's a very, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an important one. Um, for Syria, we also have two films. Uh, we have a free oh, screening of Last Men in Aleppo, as well as a, a documentary after spring. Um, which looks at refugee camps in, in Syria and sort of what are the next steps. Mm -hmm. uh, it was um, produced by John Stewart, um, and it's 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 a really it's it's a very powerful documentary as well as is Last Men of Aleppo, and that one uh, is sponsored by Hawaii J20, and uh, we are working with them to craft a post screening discussion. Um, we're, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. And then you have a, a film from Sudan. Yep, God uh, Grew Tired of Us. And yep. uh, what is this movie going to uh, cover? It, it, it follows um, uh, Su uh, Sudanese immigrants mm -hmm. uh, who came to New York. And it, it follows their, their experiences as they're um, getting settled um, in a new culture, in a new environment. And you mm -hmm. see them go through all the challenges and the struggle in, in being a Sudanese immigrant in, mm -hmm. in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and so it does unearth a lot of questions of, of surrounding immigration. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we have two minutes left okay. for our program.